Hey, what up everybody? This is Jayton Gunter, owner of Grapes and Sand Publishing. As you can see, there's wine in my glass. Welcome to another episode of Wine Wednesday, in which I... Hey, yo. It is Wednesday. Happy Wine Wednesday, by the way. Uh, I am here, and I cannot wait to get into what I got today for Wine Wednesday. Uh, welcome to another episode, guys. And, um... Yeah, I hope everybody's doing well. I uh, got a lot of things in the pipeline um, separately. Um, I don't know who's looking for a job right now in the uh, front of the house or back of the house for a restaurant. Um, but you know Wine Bar in San Francisco is hiring. Um, and the uh, salaries are very, um, I would say, in my opinion, pretty comp uh, competitive. Um, so just hit me up um, and I will put you in contact with our GM uh, over there to see if you, you know, maybe maybe be able to get hired. Um, it's a fun atmosphere, and if you're one of those people that are trying to get into the wine game but don't understand, you feel like you don't know enough, but you still want to learn, uh, we're hiring people like that. We want to educate. Uh, but then also people who uh, in the kitchen uh, want a little bit more responsibility, want to run a, a program themselves, um, this is a good start for you too. So front of the house and back of the house. Now that that's out of the way, um... I feel like uh, we should get right into the wine. And this is really one of these wines that is coming from a person, a winemaker that I freaking love. Um, I, I All their juice I've been sipping over the last uh, year and a half throughout the um, the uh, It's a Vibe cookbook being you know created and finished and published. Um, I've been sipping on this guy's wine and I've loved it. And his, uh, his wine actually made the book. But this one is something interesting. This one is... His, uh, this Ortega Family Wines, 2018 Cabernet Sauvignon. This is a rock carn uh, vineyard out of Oakville, Napa Valley. And I think I had his previous vintage, if I'm not mistaken. Hope you guys can see that label right there. Ortega Family Vineyards. I'll put a better picture at the end, uh, along with the rating for it. Um, but yeah, I've been sipping on this guy's wine. He actually has one of the best Malbecs I've had out of Napa in a long time. Um, and so, um, I wanted to give him, I wanted to check this one out and, you know, score, be honest about the score. Uh, even though I love the guy, you know, I gotta be honest about the score. So definitely gonna get into it. Um, I had one of his other cabs from a different vineyard three days ago. And I mean, it was a killer. And so I was like, okay, well I gotta try his other one out. So let's get into it. On the nose on this wine. First thing that's jumping out to me is black cherry. I'm talking about loads of pure black cherry. I'm getting a little bit of cassis going on here too, which is really dope. New car leather. Also a little bit of like a, um, a cigar, a tobacco type thing. A little bit of like a cinnamon spice going on as a secondary. Definitely wet soil, sweet wet soil. Some dark chocolate going on, some cacao. Like high cacao count. And maybe even like a little bit of like fleshy plum. Let's go ahead and taste it and see what's going on with the palate. Sometimes you just have to have a serious wine. This is a serious wine. Let's talk about structure first. Uh, medium plus full body wine. Uh, it's full body wine. It's not medium plus. Um, acid is. Medium. A little bit lower than medium on the acid, but still like enough to elevate the fruit a little bit. Tannin is round and supple, not harsh at all, very approachable. That um, black cherry is the main focus of the wine on the palate. It's like it feels like it's just dodging and ducking on the palate throughout. Uh, anything that can ab abrupt or uh, interrupt its descent down to the finish. It feels like it's just whatever pops up, other flavor profile components, um, such as the cassis that I got going on here. Um, it feels like it's like kind of ducking, dodging. It's it's staying seamless throughout the palate, basically, to the finish. Um, again, there is a little bit of cassis going on that kicks in more in the like, third quarter to the finish. Also in the third quarter to the finish is that kind of cinnamon thing I was talking about that I'm digging. Has a great mouth feel, very dry on the outsides. 
I really, really love this wine. This wine's really good. Um, I, I'm, I want to see what it's going to do in a couple more years. Um, yeah, this is really, really good. There is a touch of uh, oak stuff that it's going on here that um, if you're sensitive to oak, uh, this is an amazing wine, but there is like a kiss of oak that's a little, that is there and present and I notice it. Um, just like right there on the edge and I, I can feel it on the palate, but it doesn't take away from the purity of the fruit in this wine. It's a very good wine. Um, I love it. I really, really do. And I, if I was to score it, The chocolate stuff is kicking in on the finish. It has like a lingering like chocolate note going on here. Very long finish. Quality wine. I'm going to say uh, this wine is 90 plus. Uh, definitely in the 90 crew. Um, could, board, could be like sitting on like 91 right there. But I really, really love it. It's a really hot. It's a really uh, dope wine. Ortega Family Vineyards, man. Hey, Sue's over there killing it, bro. Like he just keeps on killing it. Every wine I get from this guy is nuts. I had his mouth back like a couple nights ago and I just... I lost my mind. I was like, this vintage is good, just like the last one. And then I tried this cab, and his cab was even better than the Malbec. So he just keeps on winning. Um, if you're a big, bold wine uh, drinker, look up Ortega Family Wines, Latin Latin winemaker, and is a killer when it comes to like balance and understanding um, the palate of the universal population. So really dope guy. Um, also, I have a lot of things coming up. Uh, I'm trying to drop by the end of the week. Another episode of Wine Tasting with Giants. Haven't done that in a while, but I want to share some. Um, I have a really good one that I want to uh, drop soon uh, at the end of this week, so stay tuned for that. Um, also, um, we have some, me and Armando, the chef, me being the psalm for our cookbook, It's a Vibe. We're going to be doing some book signing soon, so stay tuned to, for that. We'll be releasing dates very soon. Uh, we're going to be having one in Napa uh, that's, uh, that's currently being... Figured out, and then uh, we're also going to have one in um, in San Francisco at Eno Wine Bar. So stay tuned, guys. And uh, let me see, question of the day. Um, oh, I got a good one. If you're familiar with Napa, this is stuff that I need to know because I we all have our preferences and stuff. But I'm curious to know where everybody else tastes a lot. If you're familiar with Napa, what is your favorite place between? Let me go on versus um, Oakville and Spring Mountain. Let's see where you guys are at. I'm just really, really cool, curious about what, where, where you're at. Actually, let's throw in three. Let's do Alice. Let's do Alice Peak too. So Alice Peak, Oakville, or Spring Mountain. Which one of the three is your favorite? And tell me why. And tell me what wine that you love from that area. Um, Till next time, guys. Cheers. <laughs>